All right, there we go. So, Why? returns. That was your question, right? That was my question. All right. Oh, can you also do ands? Sure. Thank you. So let me open a recent file. Um, Oh, no, that's not it. Python scripts. All right, I'll just make a new one. All right, so define. Let's go. Did you send us a message in our inbox? What? Did you send us a message in our inbox? I don't think so. Okay, then it's not for you. All right, so what we're going to do, so let's say this, we want to write a function that uh, does our taxes for us, that calculates the taxes for whatever we want, a bunch of different types of taxes. So what we're going to do is we're going to say that user, and there's two different ways you can do this. So I'm going to do this one of two different ways. So user equals float input how much money Mommy. How much money? How much money? Just dollar signs. I don't think that'll work with math. How much dollar signs? Oh, how much? Oh, here you mean. Okay. How much? Why does it matter? Right. So then what we're going to do is we're going to do state tax. State is. Taxation is the. 0.04 times user. Um, County tax. Local. Let's do Fed tax. Fed is 0.02 times user. What? And then city tax is 0.01 of user. Total taxes equals state plus Fed plus tax or city. Total paid is user plus total taxes. And then we're going to print. Oh, thank you. Print for uh, you paid this amount in taxes. This is just a function I'm making up briefly to explain how return works. Um, Actually, so let's do this is what you paid in. Uh, this is the state that you paid this total. There we go. And we're just going to go Actually, I'm, I'm going to get rid of this line. All right, so return total taxes. Now I'm going to do taxes is fun one um, print. You paid this amount in taxes. So then let's do a return. How many Python files do you have saved? A lot. I could actually write a script to go through and figure it all out, but I'll put this in student resources. So this is return, return practice with taxes. So I paid eight dollars. Um, okay, question. Why yes. did you need to do return there? Why couldn't you have just done it the first day? You, you so I could put this in here? Yeah. Um you can, but so let's do instead of total taxes, let's just figure out um Uh, let's see. Uh, what this allows you to do is all of this code is now equal to taxes. So if I'm trying to figure out, 
Yeah. I'm sorry, I'm just looking at your Why are you looking at my work profile or whatever, wherever you're linked in or whatever, and not paying attention? I am, I just want to look. Wait, where'd you go to college? Wayne State University. Where's that? Middle of Detroit. Why is it Wayne State? It's found by some dude named Wayne. <laughs> Why are you looking at... The name's Bruce Wayne. Um... So you could for sure have done this. And you get the exact same, you right? You got to do fun one though. You have to change your taxes because you get five Oh, that's true, yeah. Wait, no. Still, oh wait, never mind. Okay, you get the exact same output. So the reason the reason you would do this is <clears throat> uh, control. Is there anything that re return can do that you can't do without return? Yes, it makes a function equal to a variable. It makes the result of a but function. You can still get the same output, outcome. I can get the same output. I can't get the same outcome. So what I can do with this now, taxes is now equal to a number, and I can go, and I can go, um, new tax equals, you are now going to have to pay double two times taxes. Taxes isn't a thing. Yeah, it is. Oh, okay. Yeah, but you could have just done new taxes equals two times total taxes. You mean up here? Yeah. Yeah, but this has already been written. I don't want to have to edit it. This is a set function that does a set thing. Well, it no, calculates my taxes. You could have made it global. All right, never mind. I get it. I could. It just doesn't seem to follow that. It when you get more it it actually it is I was the exact same way when I was when I was learning it in college I was like I don't ever need to use return and now that it's like well I actually understand how it works and what it can do it you don't use it too too often but when you have thirty lines of code that figures out a very specific thing and you know it works you don't want to mess with it. Yeah. Copy and paste what? No, I'm saying. That's not efficient. What you can also do, right? So learning how to do this, let's say I save a file. Um oh. Let me let me show you something. Um this is gonna take me half a second, so let's go copy, control new, control V. Um, control save. Well, I'm not done. Um, Operating system. I think this will work.
Blake, do you see the calculation for my taxes in here? No. And yet, it works. Do you know how we import random? Yeah. And then we do random dot choice, a random dot rand int, and it does something? If that is, that's this file I just made. So by using return, I can write my own function. I can save it to a specific location on my computer. And I can then tell Python, that's what this is doing, to look in that very specific spot on my computer and load this file, just like we load random. So if I, by using, using return, I don't even have to rewrite, I don't even have to open this, I don't have to edit it at all. I can just import it, say, figure out the tax, and then do something with that tax. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. So that's more of when you would use it is when you're making more complex code and you want to pull information from other things without having to open them and edit it all the time. Joe. Uh -huh. Yeah, yeah. So it doesn't matter what this is. So tax here is saying whatever's being returned becomes tax. And then you have returned. This is the variable inside of this function that gets returned. It's kind of like you saying, um, um, I'm going to throw this to Zach and whatever I'm throwing, Zach's going to pick up. Yeah. So, so yeah, sorry. So Joseph, whatever you throw, it doesn't matter. I'm expecting catch it. I don't it doesn't matter to me. Well, if it's a bowling ball, then I better be then my code better be able to deal with a bowling ball as opposed to a tennis ball. <laughs> yes. But that's why you use return. You can make a variable equal equal to an entire Python script. All right, so we answered. Just save all the review questions to separate files. What don't you get? The magic square. It's a tricky one with lists. You girls have any questions? None? Guys? Nay. Bradley, you got one? Uh, you said and. Oh, that's right. Yes, yes, yes. So let's say x is equal to 10 and y is equal to 20. You can do an if statement or a while loop. If you go if x equals equals 10 and y equals equals 20. Print you can pass, whatever the reason is. Right, so if 10 equals, or x equals 10, Bradley, yeah. and this one is true. So if this Boolean expression right here is true, and this one is true. They both have to be true in order for this, for this whole expression to be considered true, and then it goes on and executes this code. So then, um, so if we do this and we change it to or, will this still work? Mm -hmm. Why? Because it's one or the other. Correct. And what if I change this to 29? Well, let's say, you know, you have if and then you have another x10, but you don't want that x10 to be unless it's, so if you have x10 equals equals 10. If x10 equals, equal, wait. Like this? And then you have another one for this statement where like another an, another if statement. So you can totally you can go and y equal equal twenty. You can do it this way, or you can go if x equals ten, if y equal equal twenty. Question what time is Figure it out 
So what you would do, so let's go player, it's over at like 117. Player is rock, the rock. Com, uh, computer is paper. So if player equal equal rock, that, no. Yes it does, because if player has typed in rock and the computer has randomly chosen paper, that's what these two lines do. Right. This, this is if you have rock and paper. You do this six times. Just, just sit. Just hang on for a minute. And comp equals paper. Oop. Print player lo loses and computer wins. So if you pick rock and the computer picks paper, you lose. Then you would do, so you would code that, and then you would go scissors. And then you would, comp, and then you would do if the player equals paper and the computer picks scissors, you would then go rock. So in your code, you would have define rock, paper, scissors, player equals input, choose, it's close enough. Comp is random dot choice, rock. Um, if player equal equal comp print tie game tie plus equal one win is zero lose is zero tie is zero then you go elif player equal equal rock and comp equal equal paper print you chose player and the comp cho chose um, comp print you lose lose plus equal one copy rock and scissors you win so Bradley what you would do so this is what happens if the player chooses rock and the two possible outcomes that aren't a tie game this takes care of every time if I if if the player chooses rock and the computer chooses rock, this takes care of every tie game. You don't have to code for a tie game. Yeah. Now you only have to do with whether or not you win or lose. When you have rock, how do you lose? Uh, if you, if I have rock. Yeah. Uh, paper for some reason. Right. Question, if you were to run that but get scissors and rock, would you kind of run? You would have gotten like a minus, like a half point or something off. But like he coded the whole thing right. He just reversed like scissors beats rock. You get a point off. So he just got the rules of the game wrong. Not necessarily the rules of the. If you make a mistake like that, like. Well, if it never said that, like in the question, rock beats scissors, paper beats rock, scissors beats paper. Yeah, but everyone knows how to play rock. Almost everyone knows how to play rock paper scissors. Almost everybody. What are you talking about? But regardless, that's how you do and. You can also put or, and then you can also put not. 
Well, watch. Well, it's basically Bradley. If I equal equal means equal to, right? What does that mean? Exclamation point equals. Does not equal. So if you have, it's the same as if you do this. That's one way you could do it. You could put if player bullet hits, or if not player bullet hit, you missed, or if the player bullet does not hit, or doesn't equal hit, or the position of the bullet never equals the position of the bad guy. Or the good guy. Or the good guy, whatever. Do you have any more questions, Bradley? No, I do not. No? Does anyone have questions? 42. Do you know what that's from? Hey, Chuck, here's a guy to the galaxy. Yeah. I haven't read that book. Why did it get so popular? What? <clears throat> is it that good of a book, or is it just like something that came out of a bad book? All right, I'm going to take that. You guys don't need any more review. For now. For now. So you guys just start working on Chapter 7 review, or keep working on it.